So one of my favourites, no question about that, the Cobra 2000 GTL with the couple of speakers that run alongside. This one's got very, very nice cases just uh, for the age. And bearing in mind, these are starting to get quite, uh, you know, a bit aged them now. This one's been totally recapped. And um, it certainly has had uh, a few other things done to it as far as processor boards and bits. Drives incredibly well, actually. But um, I, um, if you remember going back a couple of months ago, I picked up the chrome, <laughs> chrome covered one, which was uh, quite an interesting um, uh, unit that had been highly modified out of uh, out of England, and uh, it had some features that I just really enjoyed. Um, this one did have some channels in it. So to be honest, we've removed them, and we've gone back to a stock 40 channels. Um, and this was the need for the, the Gamma Ray kit uh, because it had some switches on the front previously. So full disclosure, it you know has had channels before. Um, but um, uh, also, uh, I didn't do the recap on this one. It was done in the US. And um, I had a quick look at just some of the work that's been done. And uh, boy, I tell you what, some you know incredible hours worth of work that went into this one. Now I'm just listening on an antenna. I was hoping one of the boys might come up. Um, but we might switch over to the... Um, uh, so the analyzer will just have a bit of a look and see if uh, one of the lads comes up in the next uh, five or ten minutes. But um, I love the dual speaker. As you can sort of see, speaker over there turns on, and then speaker over there turns on, or both. And the dual speaker actually works very well on these. It's um, uh, quite nice. And, uh, of course, you know, there's no VFO, VFO A or VFO B on these things. Um, it purely was a... Um, uh, a sound fidelity thing, uh, certainly giving you, um, not quite stereo, but certainly a, a nice uh, way to listen to, to the signals coming in. Um, while we're just waiting to see if any of the boys turn up, I might as well have a quick look. Um, the frequency readout on this is incredibly stable. Uh, by having a look at this one, I actually learnt a couple of modifications I had not seen before. The chap in the US that did this one uh, did uh, extremely well. And um, I, I def and I had a few notes and bits to work from just as to what he'd done. So that was good just to be able to get an idea. But um, you can go from counter to clock. So it's 5.35 p.m. here. Uh, we can set alarms on it. Uh, we can set it to come on in the morning. Uh, the radio will turn on at whatever alarm time that you set. So you've got alarm sort of times that you set in there. Um, now I'm trying to remember how do you set the alarm time. I think it's alarm and set yeah that's right okay um, so you can then set your alarm time while that button's in and then that turns the alarm on and off so um, if we were to set it for um, and turn it off and set it for 537 it would come on in the next minute 60 seconds or so but um yeah look they, they really did think these things through they're a nice radio they really really did sort of do a lot on them that i was really impressed with over the years um, it's definitely one of the go-to radios for the classics um, if you're you know, looking for something that is a radio that everybody remembers, well, <laughs> it definitely is the, um, the Cobra 2000 GTL. I'll, I'll just check, see if uh, 177, 177, or 231, 229 from Tangambalanga calling, one if you're about. Just see if they're um, about, but if not, we'll head over to the, um, uh, to the analyzer, and we'll just check what she's doing. Um, Full disclosure again, I actually know this works perfectly. I just haven't fired it up for months. Um, uh, I've um, got the Chrome one in, and uh, that's been, uh, uh, well, to be honest, been sitting on the floor. It shouldn't be sitting on the floor. I just thought I wanted to get it onto the shelves where uh, this one was sitting. So to do that, so it's time to pull this one out and um, uh, do a bit of a review. And, uh, uh, well, most of you know what happens when I've got two or something. So um, we'll see what happens from there. Okay, let's uh, hook it up to the monitor. Righto, so we're hooked up into the monitor. Let's just have a little bit of a, a listen and a see. Bring the volume up a little bit. We should be able to hear something here. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, okay. Hang on. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, <laughs> I'm trying to do this one handed. Oh, no, one, two, one, two. Hang about. I'll just um, bring some mic gains and things up a little bit here, I think. And, oh, yes, that'd be right. We've got the. Might turn in here. Oh, 
Okay, so it's doing a little bit over its 12 watts, but certainly uh, within spec. And we'll just come over to generate some signal. And let's see what we're hearing. Turn the monitor down, it would help a bit. And let us go. Okay. So, at the moment, 50 microvolts there, S9, so I'm happy with that, but we want to know more importantly, what can it hear when we go down? We're going down, down, down. 0.49 of a microvolt, um, and that's hearing beautifully. Let's see if we can go any lower. Oh, I'm still just only just hearing it at 0.0499. At 0.158, definitely hearing it quite noise free. Just a little bit of hash at 0.158, so minus 123 dBm, pretty hot receiver. So um, uh, this, this certainly uh, passes that, that test very well. Uh, one thing we didn't check was AM power. Let's just have a look here. Um, and right on about that 5 watt mark. So yeah, look, that's, that's fine. All right, well, let's go back onto antenna and let's just see if any of the boys have... Had their tea, <laughs> well, probably it's right on tea time, I suppose. We'll have a look. Okay, while we're seeing if uh, I've just sent a message to the lads to see if any of them are near their phones just to come up. But uh, one of the other things you want to check too um, digits, just make sure that you're getting all your digits working quite uh, correctly. Uh, you'll find displays from time to time, they'll have a digit out somewhere. It'll normally be the display. The switches on these are pretty good. Uh, generally, you don't find yourself replacing the switches, but as you can see. This here is working perfectly, which is great, and um, certainly uh, a great delight when you see that. Um, this is still obviously running incandescent bulbs. Uh, a lot of people do run uh, the likes of um, uh, LEDs in them. I do like the incandescent bulbs. I, I think they, they generally, you know, give you that better look. It, it just is a much better look just to the whole unit. Well, I don't think we're going to be successful on our test um, uh, 231 or 177 229. I wonder if you guys are listening at all. Uh, just listening on channel 35. And um, we'll just, um, just give them a little second, but if not, uh, I can assure you this thing receives and transmits beautifully. But uh, sometimes it's good just to do a bit of a test on air. But unfortunately, living in Tangambalanga, uh, the two Steves, as I call it, are probably the only stations I've got to talk to generally. So this is. Um, this is the uh, the problem. Oh well, sorry. Unless unless the skip's running, the skip's running, fantastic. But uh, beautiful lineup. Um, the speakers are, are worth their weight in gold these days too. They they really are, especially when they match so beautifully. Um, now, um, the reason I can tell um, is have a look at this. It's just a couple of little things to notice about Cobras. Um, I'll just get the speakers the right right. Okay, um, Cobra when they did these, they tried as best possible to get the grain to match up on speakers. See how the grain goes through this, through this, follows that line there and through there. Uh, I know this sounds a bit picky. They really did try to do that. So when you look at the overall top shot of it, you can tell those speakers are pretty much the genuine speakers that came with the radio. Um, now, they didn't always get it perfect, but you can sort of see even here. Have a look at the grain. See how that follows there, goes big there, big there, and follows around, comes around. These are the matching speakers. You know, when we say matching speakers, often we mean, hey, if we can get them from anywhere, great. But you'll find the shading changes, um, the, the, and you'll often get a situation where you might have bought one of these with one speaker, and you will go and get your second speaker, and it, the, the one over here will look entirely different to the one over here. It's a pity. Um, sometimes it's just um, conditions of where they've been kept, whether they've been in the sun, lots of things. But you can always tell when you get one where you know those two speakers came with that radio. It's how it was sold. It's you know. So what he, what we're looking at here is a very much um, uh, a uh, well as you know as it was sold as new. And I tell you, um, <laughs> the only other thing you could do to get away with that is do what the other chap in the UK did. If you chrome all the speakers and chrome all the covers, you won't tell the difference. <laughs> anyway, all right. Well, look. Thanks very much for having a look at this. Um, Cobra 2000 GTL video. We'll probably get this up um, in our obvious spots that we put things uh, and keep an eye out for it. But uh, certainly I just wanted to uh, run it up and make sure that it was all doing everything it should do. Seems to be doing everything beautiful. So certainly... Uh, oh, the other thing I was going to say too. We have the original Gamma Match... Um, uh, gamma Ray Graphics, sorry. Uh, 
one for here and here. Now, I didn't feel the need to put it on because, quite seriously, this is so clean. But um, those uh, two pieces will come with this radio as well. So if you want it to match exactly um, down to the front here, where we've done gamma, gamma ray graphics here, gamma ray graphics here and here, um, uh, and, and to be honest, we did the speakers just playing around a bit. They didn't need it either, so they could come off quite easily if, if uh, someone didn't want those. Uh, but we did need them on the front just to um, hide a few uh, three holes that were there, so that was the, the reasoning in that. All right, 73 steer, all the best. We'll uh, get this up uh, on the usual sort of areas that you'll see it. Hope you've enjoyed having a look at the Cobra 2000 GTL. Cheers.